I'm Roy Nicholson. I'm a painter. I work on the Eastern Long Island. Uh, I recently had a show at the University of Stony Brook, which was a pretty big exhibition. Not only do I do paintings, but I've done some public work, uh, a large mosaic in Los Angeles for Union Station, for example, um, which is two 55-foot long mosaics in the equivalent of their grand Central. <coughs> and uh, I had a piece on Long Island at, in Hicksville, uh, the Hicksville Station waiting room. It's got two large mosaics. So, uh, my work tends to be um, a play between abstraction and representation. I enjoy both places and I like moving between them. So uh, I'm going to be showing you some work that, that uh, shows that. This is a piece uh, which is a big installation. Each of these paintings is 24 inches square and I painted them one a week for a year. So there was not only uh, the um, idea of putting up a, a large group of smaller units to make a big piece, but the concept of there being time passing, um, the idea of it being a kind of personal diary, um, and also the chance that I have in individual pieces to move from abstraction to representation and see what, how, they, how they interact. Uh, this is actually an installation in my studio, so it starts at the top left and it goes left to right, left to right, left to right, everything in the order of the year. I started on the solstice, the summer solstice of 2008. Now this is a different installation. This was how it looked at the University of Study Group. So it can be configured in different ways. In fact, uh, in the Dowling exhibition, which is the other catalog that I around, there's an opening center fold where it's on two, two lines. Maybe you could hold that up and show people. So that was on 60 feet as well. So it's got the possibility of having different arrangements, which means that you get a different dynamic set up each time that it's got the southern arrangement. Um, it is at the moment in the Four Seasons restaurant in Manhattan. So it's actually in the terrace room, and it'll be up for a year. It's just, they started in January, so it's up until the end of the year. If anybody's walking by 52nd Street, um, just walk in and you can ask to see it. Uh, if there isn't a private party going on in the terrace room, it should be available. So that's kind of how it looks there. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's the same wall as Jackson Park's Blue Poles once hung. Um, they, the blue poles were put up there temporarily while they had to dispute with Rothko, who eventually, of course, did not give his paintings to them. And uh, they wound up at the Tate Gallery. It's the same wall, which is kind of nice. There's a little magic about that. Um, I began, each of the paintings has a painting, has a, a plant from my garden. I'm, I'm an avid gardener, and the garden is a source for a great deal of my work. The, um, the, the proximity, the idea of being in the natural world is what's very important to me as an artist. And um, I, although I love the city and I certainly spend time there, um, I'm much happier living in the country next to my garden, which, is, which allows me to work almost um, as a sculptor because it's three-dimensional. Um, so I have a three-dimensional quality in the garden which is also very much like my paintings because I move things around, I change the colors, you know, the, the, the texture, all sorts of stuff um, comes out of that process of gardening. Um, the one advantage I have as an artist is that I don't have any voles eating all the roots of <laughs> most of my plants. Um, believe it or not, this started off actually as a painting of um, a columbine, and all that got left of it is this little bit here. If anybody's looked into a columbine flower, it's got these deep little windows, and that's all that got left. It's also this the summer solstice. Um, the first time, I, this is actually the second time I've done a similar uh, discipline pro program for a year. Uh, the first project wound up in the Federal Reserve Bank in Atlanta, where it's on 60 feet of wall, which is nice. Um, but in this case, I was looking for uh, each of the plants coming directly from my garden. And um, I began on the summer solstice, instead of like the first time I did it, which was January the 1st, 
So that was a kind of a year to year. But this one went from solstice to solstice. And to give you a little bit of an idea of my working methods, um, I have a painting which is sort of basically landscape feel to it. Um, a photograph of a marigold. I use the computer a lot. So in the computer I manipulated the marigold image and I dropped out a lot of the color excepting the edges. So on the, on the right hand side is the image that I actually worked from by isolating the edges in these little yellow uh, linear aspects to it. And then the, I superimposed that because I could see through it and have transparency to it. And I uh, transposed it onto the landscape image to give this kind of composite which, some, which is like macro and micro at the same time and it deals with the image and puts it into a landscape kind of situation. There's a similar process goes on here. Um, this is uh, aconitum or monkswood, um, which has got a very interesting sort of uh, fl flower with a lot of veins that I got very attracted to. I like the, the pattern of painting it. Um, this painting began quite representationally but it moved more and more towards the abstract, although it's actually a pretty close approximation of the veins themselves. So it's, uh, it's like then um, this playing between the abstract, abstract and the representation. So I'm using the representational image, but I'm creating something else out of it. And that was my aim for every painting, was to start with something which became a trigger for my creative process, to see where I could take that image, that original image, and kind of move it into a place where nobody else had been, or I hadn't been, or it, you know, it was, in other words, it was not uh, a illustration, it wasn't an illustration of uh, what I was looking at. I was trying to find something in it that I could take further. And to illustrate the other extreme, the, the, um, the more representational side, this is an iris, but it's up, up close, and it's pretty much how it looks. And uh, it, but, it, but what I liked about it being so up close was that I have, it has other connotations. And if people look at it and they say, well, it looks like a ski jump or, <laughs> or a mountain or some, some other uh, interpretation of it, which I think is one of the interesting things about abstraction, that you can take something and have it not really quite recognizable. And then I finished the project with uh, the solstice, the next summer solstice at night. And this is actually what the moon was doing that week. So, um, and the, it's, it's an image of my god. I have a little arbor that I've built at the end, and there's a long path that goes down to it. It's it's in the woods, by the way. Um, I, I'm gardening in sand, which is not the best uh, soil to begin with, but uh, it makes it um, a challenge, definitely. This painting um, is now. I'm, I have an offshoot from the 52 weeks. I, I didn't, didn't give you the title, I don't think so. The, the previous one was called the 52 weeks 2, because it's the second time I've done it. Uh, this is an offshoot. I'm sort of mining a lot of the ideas that I had during that year. And this is the one that you saw earlier with the monk's hood. Um, but I'm taking plants that are poisonous. And every plant that I am now painting in this new series called the Toxic Garden uh, is of a plant which can do you in, or do you harm at least, <laughs> and yet be very beautiful. So it's kind of a metaphor for a lot of things. Um, this painting has just been acquired by the Parish Art Museum in Southampton, so I'm hoping when they get their nice new museum that it will be on display. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry? Oh, that's, they're, these, the ones I'm showing you now are 48 inches square. So they're about this big. The other ones were 24. <laughs> uh, this is another toxic plant, uh, sweet peas, in spite of its name. Uh, sweet peas um, are, uh, pa pa paralyze you. They're, they're, they can, at various degrees, if you have to eat one, not that I've tried it, but uh, it can be quite, quite deadly. And, and in this case, what I'm doing again is I've, I've picked up on some form, some shape that I've seen in the plant that's growing. And I've taken that and made something extra out of it. So 
the shape that the, the, the um, tendrils have got this kind of flat leaf. And I've just taken that as a shape, and then I've been interweaving them, so it, it becomes a, a kind of complex and um, a little bit manic <laughs> kind of quality. And I think I'm, I'm probably a colorist. Uh, color is very, very important to me. I even taught color theory, believe it or not, um, for quite a while. And it's, um, the color is, is a really key element to the emotional quality and how it carries the image. I think that's where I stopped. Yeah. So. Yeah.